This webinar brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and managed by LifeChamp. And today we are going to talk about this topic, which is environment, social governance, investing. So in short, environment, social gov governance stands for ESG. So we call this the ESG investing webinar. So welcome everybody to this ESG uh, investing webinar. How are you guys doing? Yeah, today our COVID number is still uh, uh, break uh, previous highs again. So yeah, hope that our stock market will also be like our COVID number <laughs> lately. Okay, so everybody please stay safe in this pandemic. And uh, you know, uh, and uh, stay safe, refrain from going out and join our webinar so you can gain more knowledge and avoid any physical contact with any person. Okay, so yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in on time. So um, as you know that, ESG has become more and more important. And nowadays, there are a lot of institutional funds who need to invest uh, based on this ESG investing standard. So they cannot simply invest in companies that do not uphold a high standard of ESG in their corporate governance. So that's why some funds have to divest in com uh, from companies that have... Uh, you know, that have shown some violation to some of the ESG standards. Today, we are going to delve deeper into how this ESG affect investing, right? So uh, before we begin, just want to go through a disclaimer. So whatever we share on this webinar is only for educational purpose. In no way that we give any recommendation to buy or sell any companies in this uh, session. So if you decide to make any investment decision after this uh, webinar, you do it at your own risk. All right. So uh, allow me to share with you uh, the speaker profile for our invited guest speaker today. And she had just uh, spoken to you on this past uh, Wednesday. And today, uh, we are very honored to have her back on our show today to talk about ESG investing. Now, she's none other than Pauline. Okay, now Polly is a licensed and experienced financial planner who is certified by the Malaysian Securities Commission, a financial planner representative license, CMSRL, and Bank Negara Financial Advisor representative license. But Polly is also a cross trainer and public speaker at uh, Financial Planning Association Malaysia and Bursa Malaysia. Now, over 25 years in education, she has accumulated over 50,000 students and conducted over 200 large scale corporate courses. Now, other than being a professional financial planner and educator, Pauline is also a best-selling author who has published six books on investment and financial planning. Her articles have appeared in financial magazines such as The Personal Money, Money Compass, and many more. Yeah, so are you ready for Pauline's? All right, so without further ado, let me hand over the session to Pauline. Pauline, the stage is yours now. Okay, sure. Uh, allow me to share my screen. Um, yes, go ahead. All right. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, good to see you guys again. <laughs> uh, we just uh, we just had a session on Wednesday, so now we are look. Um, I'm seeing you guys again. So I see that um, in the chat, Albert say. Um, Nice to see me again, okay? Uh, it's nice to see you too, okay? So in today's session, um, we are going to talk about a uh, very in thing, okay? So this, everybody's talking about ESG. So what is ESG, okay? So just now Shane has actually said that this ESG is every fund managers they are looking at. So in, in fact, for today, right, we should be looking at this um, ESG from the fund managers perspective because after all, who is buying the stocks okay if the fund managers are buying it so that will drive the liquidity so maybe we should also um, look at those stocks that are you know bought by those um, fund managers as well okay all right um let me open up like okay like this hmm. so today's agenda agenda we will have uh what does esg stands for and then the role of ESG in investment, Finch um, ESG score template. So we are looking at ESG from um, two perspectives, 
because for ESG, not only we see in the equity market, we also see in the bond market as well. So we don't really um, delve too much into the bond market, but more onto the equity. But it's just that I use this pitch uh, ESG score template to show you what are the guidelines and the criteria for the um, template for the scoring part. So it's just a, a template. Okay, but the emphasis is still on the equity market. Um, and then we, we are going to assess the ESG scores for the Busan Malaysia stock. So at the end of the session, right, about maybe towards the end of it, um, we are going to, I'm going to show you some of the Busan Malaysia stocks and then you are going to guess what is their score. Okay, so these scores are actually from a reputable um, scoring um, website and um, sustainability com and we are going to i'm going to test you guys um like based on your judgment what's the score that you will give these um stocks okay so i'm going to go through one by one and then uh, hopefully when you gain your knowledge you are you'll be able to um, estimate the score because after all when you look into the company right um you wouldn't be able to get the scores immediately so you must be able to assess each company like uh, what is the potential score, like ESG score for each individual company. So we're going to look into that. Okay, some history and background. ESG environmental, social and governance investing started all the way back in 2004 by uh, Kofi Annan. So he's a former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. So Annan wrote to over 50 CEOs of major financial institutions inviting them to partake in a joint initiative to integrate ESG into capital markets within the framework of the UN Global Compact. So he actually came up with this idea and then he personally wrote to 50 CEOs of major financial institutions. So um, it's an effort and then this effort took off. So um, the importance of ESG. Since then, ESG investing has grown in importance worldwide with increased awareness and adoption rates. According to Deloitte, the percentage of retail and institutional investors that apply ESG principles to at least a quarter of their portfolios jumped from 48% in 2017 to 75% in 2019. Furthermore, a um, 2018 US Trust Wealth and Worth survey concluded new investments in ESG funds could total 20 trillion in the next two decades. So the market for ESG is huge. Okay, so everybody is looking into um, ESG investing. And then um, if the fund managers are participating, so that will drive the liquidity. So what is ESG investing? So basically the word E stands for environmental. So this include climate change strategy, biodiversity, water efficiency, energy efficiency, carbon intensity, carbon means carbon dioxide, environmental management system. So all these were referring to the global warming issues because if we do not treat the environment well, so most likely, the impact is that it will create global warming and then the temperature will increase a little bit by a little bit. So every increase of one degree, it's a big thing, okay? It's a big deal. So if you increase by one degree Celsius, it will mean that the crops, okay, it will affect the crops and it will affect the, the um, uh, a, a huge uh, food sources. And these food sources, will drive up the inflation, okay? So if let's say the all the crops and everything become more expensive, then you will have inflation. So when you have inflation, that will result in um, raising of interest rate and then, then the economy will have a you know, contraction and then the share market will drop. So all these are all affected. So that's why the in fund managers, they are very concerned with the environment, okay? And all of us should be concerning about environmental, um, care for the environment. And then the next one is social. Social um, refer to the equal opportunities, freedom of association, health and safety, 
human rights, customer and products responsibility, child labor. So all these, okay, uh, uh, recently we see uh, in China, what happened was the um, Xinjiang, right? In Xinjiang for the human rights. And then because they said that the um, cotton, the, the raw material, the cotton was actually produced by those um, um, people whereby they do not have the human rights. So then they boycott. So then um, they had a lot of uh, retaliation and some of the Chinese people also boycott those US company and then, you know, this. So in fact, if you to look at um, having um, human rights and child labor, all these product, um, customers and product responsibility, these are all uh, important. And then um, if the company can take care of these issues, um, especially when they have a report. Usually these public listed companies, they will have a so-called sustainability report, okay? For example, Maybank publish every year a sustainability report. This year, um, last year, 2020, they published, uh, I think about 90 pages of a sustainability report. In that 90 pages, it's very detailed. Who, which society is benefiting? What, um, how did they um, um, contributed, contributing to the communities? and then um, the governance and then the environmental is very detailed. So in the end, all the public listed companies, they should be looking at um, producing these kind of a sustainability report so that they want to keep the investors um, aware that they are, they are really into um, ESG, okay? They really care for the society. The governance, governance refer to the business ethics compliance, board independence, executive compensation, shareholder democracy. So what one whole word, okay, what it means is that it, it one, um, this one is uh, referring to transparency. That means you want to be accountable for your stakeholders, major stakeholders. So whatever you do as a operating as a business, you have to be accountable for your various stakeholders, including your customers, your suppliers or governments, um, your own management board, your everybody. So this is um, uh, kind of like uh, uh, um, be responsible for, okay? So uh, that we will look into further, okay? Which is ESG, okay? So the philosophy behind the ESG criteria is to recognize the effect companies have on the environment and the society as a whole and in turn, how their ESG policies can impact their own resilience and profitability. Uh, a lot of time, um, you may think that, oh, ESG, that means that uh, you cannot make money already, is it? Because you have to um, take care of the um, human rights, you cannot ill-treat them, you have to pay accordingly, and then you have to take care of the environment, you have to take care of the packaging, it cannot be too, too um, damaging to the environment. So you have to spend some money on the packaging and then um, all the procedures from the um, supplier uh, until the customers, the whole supply chain, everything has to be um, uh, ethical, environmental friendly and everything. So all this costs money. So if you to look at it, um, if you think that it, it costs money, right? But then how about the long run? So a lot of time, if you can spend this money in the short term, the benefit is that you can gain reputation and a good reputation. And this good reputation, they are the intangible um, assets to your company. And then it will give you more many fold or many times in return. So um, you can, you, 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 in fact, you can be profitable. Okay, It's not that after you have done all these um, ESG things and then you cannot be no, um, in the long run, it has to be sustainable and profitable. So companies' environmental policies um, might contribute to water its reputation and its regulatory compliance will be at risk. Now, the importance of having um, this environmental policy is that what happens if you do not take care of the environment and then the, you do not have a good policies in terms of the, um, your managing or how you manage your waste, your um, 
with production waste and then um, it will cause pollution. And certain industries, they are more prone to all these environmental um, uh, uh, damaging the environment, certain industries. So later we'll look into those companies. So does that mean that that's the end of these companies? No, that doesn't mean that. So when you know that you're operating in such a harsh environment whereby you are actually not doing the environment any good, but doesn't mean that you'll be, you know, chopped a mark saying that you'll be dead forever. No, you can do something. So a lot of these um, oil and gas companies, right, they turn to renewable energy. So besides um, developing those um, um, extracting exploration, right, they also um, look into the renewable um, aspect of it, re renewable energy. And all those um, utility company, companies like um, Tanaga, TNB, and um, uh, Malakoff, these utility companies, right, they were also um, looking into um, renewable energy like solar energy, okay? So this will improve their image because they care for the environment. And uh, for social policies might lead to low worker productivity and morale, then increasing the chances of high employee turnover or absenteeism. So you need to treat the employees well. Okay, so if you can treat the employees well, then that will improve your productivity. This could involve a lack of compliance, deteriorating relations with shareholders, lack of diversity within the leadership, corruption, and other factors that can impact a company's financial standing or reputation. So have the, the, the stakeholders, the shareholders, or may, maybe the, the management itself, they have to have a good governance because all these corruption and all this um, uh, lack of transparent, these will affect the reputation of the company. So of course, ESG principles are just one of many indicators in that investors will take into account in their decision-making process. So after all, um, there are so many factors, right? So ESG is just one aspect of it, okay? You, it, you cannot rely totally on ESG. However, it, it, it is a, uh, the hottest theme in the world now. So everybody is talking about it. So um, if you are not aware of, that means you are not in the trend. You're not in the um, team, okay, investing team. Now, this one is the Malaysia pledge to the environment. Because as a oil producing country and also a resource um, we are full of natural resources. So we, we were susceptible to all these, um, you know, that cause damaging to the environment. So that's why we need to have a pledge. So Malaysia promised to part participate in global efforts to address climate change, even before the Paris Agreement was signed in 2009. So like 10 years ago at the United Nations um, Framework Con Convention on Climate Change, meeting in Copenhagen, former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak announced that Malaysia would pursue a 40% reduction in its carbon emission intensity by 2020, contingent on adequate technology transfer and financing from the developed world. So back in 2009, we already pledged that we want to reduce the um, carbon emission by 40%. Okay, although the additional financing and technology were not forthcoming, Malaysia was able to achieve a carbon emissions intensity reduction of 33% by 2011 and is likely to meet this goal. Okay, so um, Malaysia's latest commitment is that reflected in the nationally determined contribution, it's called NDC, to the Paris Agreement is to reduce its emissions intensity by 45%. By 2030, with 10% of this goal contingent upon international assistance. Okay, so we have even pledged 45% of reduction by 2030. So all these are our downside. Okay, now there's this index. Not many of us know about it. I didn't know about it until I do research. So I, um, it's in fact has been there for many years. 
So this is called the FTSE for Good Busa Malaysia Index, FTSE. Now, FTSE for Good, right, um, is actually, um, okay, let me explain this. FTSE for Good Busa Malaysia Index is, a, is actually constituents that selected from the constituents of the FTSE Busa Malaysia uh, EMAS mass index of the 100 um, companies screened in accordance with the transparent and defined environmental, social and governance. So what it means is that this index, right, it has a basket of uh, stocks. And this basket of stocks are from the our EMAS index, 100 of them we selected and then put in. Of course, it has to screen through uh, those um, like uh, um, criteria. You have to screen through the criteria. So the companies in the Busan Malaysia EMAS universe with an ESG score exceeding a defined fresh, um, threshold are eligible for inclusion in the FUSI for, for good Busa Malaysia index. So you need to um, have a certain score, then you can be included in the um, this um, index. Now, so the main objective of this index is that by having this index, right, you are actually encouraging those companies that are not in the, in the rank, they wanted to be in the group. So they have to do extra effort in order to um, get into this rank. Okay, so um, this is a good index whereby um, it actually motivates the Malaysian companies to um, achieve certain target of the ESG score so that they can be included in this index. Okay, so there are currently 75 companies in this index. So later we'll look into that. So FUSI for Good Busan Malaysia Index have all these um, 14 criteria. Okay, so let's take a look. Basically, you have these three main theme, which is environmental, social, and governance. And out of the environmental, you have the biodiversity, climate change, pollution resources, water security, supply chain environment. Now, supply chain environment. Um, Maybe I should ask you this question. You look at this environment, okay, supply chain. So you are looking at your, when you are doing a, a operation, a business activity, right? So you need to get raw material from your um, supplier. Okay, so that's supply chain. Now, how would that impact the environment and which, which um, industry are more susceptible to this kind of uh, risk. Okay, so all these are all risks. Okay, all these are all risks. So which industry are more prone to this risk? That means your supply chain environmental risk. That means it will involve pollution. Okay, which industry? Anybody? Timber oil and gas. Mm. These are all natural resources, right? Okay, one more industry. One more. I just want to see one more. Okay. Where is my chair? How come I can't see the chair? Oh, okay. The chair is the Q&A, right? Okay, you know, there's another one. Okay. Oh, furniture, oil and gas, power, agriculture, plastic, uh, metal, yes. Plantation, okay. Palm oil, okay, so you got it. So yes, palm oil, plantation. So these, this industry, in fact, um, is more susceptible to the risk. And the risk is the environmental risk. So as you know, the palm oil, um, industry, you need to clear the forest. So when you clear the forest, we call it what? Deforestation, right? Deforestation. Okay, deforestation. So then when you are cutting down the trees, what happened? The endangered species. Endangered species. So 
what are the endangered species that the, the people are concerned? Do you know which animal? Which animal you think? Malaysia, we have what? Tiger, global warming, animals, animals. Tiger, yes. Which animal? Apes. It's called orang utan. Yeah, orang utan, yes. That's right, that's right. Okay, so if you Google, right? In the Google, it says that it will um, cause the orang utan and the um, what? Rhino. Um, there's one very rare species of rhino or whatever to be um, extinct. Okay, so, so um, people are concerned with these animals. So therefore, um, the EU, okay, they banned the Malaysian palm oil. And now Malaysia, we have to put in the law, okay? I mean, uh, uh, to contest, right? We, we want to um, rebuild this thing. So it will be in, in a legal, legal case. So um, we'll see what happened. And then, um, but nevertheless, um, this industry is, um, is concerned about the environment, okay? So you have other industry as well, like the oil and gas and all those that uh, affect the natural resources, okay? Because after all, these natural resources, right, is non renewable And um, that's why um, nowadays, I expect the investment theme seems to be surrounding with electric vehicle, renewable energy, um, green energy, all these um, batteries, all these, okay? So um, the, the Busan Malaysia stocks that are involved are those great tech, that have the batteries and um, those technology stocks that involve in the green energy, and these companies will be the um, will be sought after because it's an investment team. It's like a, a team that you know everybody chase after. Of course, this investment team will come and go. So as long as you are in the team, right? You are in the trend. Okay, just go with the trend. Okay. Okay, so this one is the environment. So another one, we move on to the social. Social refers to the people relationship, okay? So in this case, the environment is the, you know, the, the nature relationship. Now this one is the people relationship. So these people will be your own employees and your, the, there's one word here, um, health and safety this one you know right the, the employees health and safety the human rights and uh, the labor standard and there's one supply chain social okay so i want to focus on this which company um in the world they care about the farmers see who can answer this which company is a very famous company in the world right it's a u.s company that care for the farmers they care for their income they want them to be sustainable. They help them, they train their, the farmer's skills and then they help them to um, uh, increase product. Yes, a, um, a, a Aslan, you are right, Starbucks. I was thinking, do, 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 do we get any answer? Okay, so Aslan, you are right, it's a Starbucks. Okay, so they are famous for what they are doing for the farmers, they care for their livelihood. So they not only they just simply buy the coffee beans from them, they actually um, help them to um, reduce the cost of um, the, the, the farming and also become more productive, okay, efficient in the producing for them. Okay, and they want to them to have a sustainable um, income as well. Okay, so if you can do that, so that means do you gain reputation? Sure, you will gain reputation. So that means your company is not those um, exploit people kind of a company. You you care for people's livelihood. Okay, then um, the corporate governance. So this one look at risk management. So after all, right after all these things, in the end, it go back to the management level because this governance is referring to the management level, whereby you look at how the management. Um, it themselves to manage the risk, the overall risk. They can manage the risk for the um, this particular risk. They can manage the risk for this particular risk, and then they can um, manage the overall risk of the company. 
So this part here is actually the, the most important of that company because it, it in charge of the overall um, uh, risk management. Okay, so if you can, like uh, if let's say you're a shipping company, those shipping company, they carry, let's say um, crude oil, okay? Then what happened is that if you are not careful, you, are, you, you do not manage your risk well, and um, there's some procedures that you didn't follow or whatever, so then you lead into a accident and that accident will cause the, the, um, the ship to have pollution, yes, sea pollution. And that sea pollution is terrible, it's very detrimental because um, the sea is so big, okay? So there's no way you can clean, clear it, there's no way. You just have to let it sit through and then it will be spreading out permanently in the overall sea, okay? So you can't, you can't take it out. So that, that sea pollution is the most damaging to the lives, to the wildlife, and also to the environment. So if you are operating in that kind of a business operation, then you need to have a very good governance in terms of your procedure, your SOP, and everything such that you want to cut down the, minimize the risk, okay? Okay, now this um, FUSI for good, you can scan the QR code, and then you can get this report. This report is the latest report, which is March 31st, 2021. So it tells you um, our Busan Malaysia um, uh, companies, stocks, public listed companies that are in this index. Okay, so you can scan this and, can, and then you can, you can actually um, get this report. So I'm going to show you this report. Um, is it this one? Ah, this one. Yeah. Okay, so this is the one. It's called the FUSI for Good Pusa Malaysia Index 31st March 2021. So it's a three page kind of a report. So it has this information. So I have already um, print screen and then we, uh, we go through them. Okay, I have print screen them. Okay. So you can see that the first diagram here um, shows you the blue line is um, the FUSI for Good index chart. Now this FUSI for Good index chart, they have their own index as well. So um, you, can, you can see the chart also. I'll show you later. I just want to um, share with you this, um, this performance um, benchmark. So this is to um, benchmark against the uh, mass index. Okay, and then you can see that um, this actually uh, below the performance of the AMAS index. The blue line is below because the blue line is the um, FUSI for Good Busa Malaysia index. So the blue line is below. So that means in terms of performance, it is below the AMAS index. Okay, but how about our KLCI index? So um, from the Bloomberg, I can actually get this FUSI for Good Busa chart, okay? So this is a one-year chart, one-year chart. And then I compare, although I cannot compare like uh, together, so I open up two charts. So this is one-year chart. So you can see from one glance, right? In fact, um, the FUSI for Good index, right, is better than the KLCI index. Although not as good as the um, a mass index, but it's better than the KLC index. You see, this trend is like this, but this trend is uh, better. Okay, so um, there's advantage in investing in this kind of uh, um, ESG related stocks. There are advantage. And then you can see that. Um, FUSI for Good Index is a series of ethical investment stock market indices launched in, 20, uh, in 2001, okay? So a number of uh, stock market indices are available, for example, covering UK shares and all this. So this is um, the, the origin of this uh, FUSI for Good Index. It's not from Malaysia, it's from the UK, London, okay? 
So this index is from there. And then they have uh, other index for other markets as well. And this index, right, excludes what? Excludes companies due to their involvement in tobacco production, nuclear weapons, conventional weapon system, or coal power industry, and rates companies for inclusion based environmental sustainability. So what it means is that if you are in this industry, basically you won't be included. They cut you out right in the beginning. If you are in this industry, you won't be, you won't be in, included. Okay. And um, this is a total return. Okay, so you can have a closer look whereby our uh, a mass index is above it. Okay, still uh, a mass index is still above it, and then the the um, ESG this for C for good is below. Okay. Now top ten constituents by market cap. So these are the top ten constituents in this index. Uh, as I said, there are seventy five companies. So these are the top ten. So basically, we see a lot of banks here. We have Public Bank, Malayan Bank, Maybank. Tanaga, TNB, CIMB, Top Glove, uh, Petronas Chemical, Asiata, Sime Darby Plantation, okay, surprise, uh, Tata Leka Holding, DG. Okay, so we have top 10 here. Okay. So the industry breakout um, breakdown will be basically in the technology sector industry, you have two companies in the Total is 74, not 75. Total is 74. So two um, from the technology, four from the telecommunication, four from healthcare, 12 from financials. Just now we saw them, public bank, main bank, CND bank, and then one more, I don't know which one. And then nine real estate, 10 consumer discretionary, 10 consumer stables, 11 industries, one is basic material. I'm surprised to see one basic materials here. Um, six energy and then five companies of the utilities. Okay, so these probably these companies are involved in the renewable energy, the green energy, then they can be included here. Okay, usually, usually, um, I would say that healthcare and uh, consumer stables, these are the companies that are more easy in terms of the um, scoring, that means they can score better. Okay. Okay, now let's take a look at the closer look. Now, this one, Fitch uh, rating is for the bond market. Now, if you, you might be wondering, how would this bond market come into the picture? Okay, so for bond market, we know we have government bonds and then we also have what? Corporate bonds, right? So when you are um, referring to the corporate bonds, so it means what? It means that these companies, right? Corporate bonds issuers, they, they are rating, their risk factor, their ratings, right? Depends on their ability to pay back the loan, okay? So if let's say you are, company is operating in a high risk environment whereby you operate in the shipping company whereby, you had one bad um, incident and then you need to um, compensate, okay? Then you need to pay out like uh, millions and millions of compensation. So then that will affect your, um, your cash flow because you need to pay so much money for the compensation and that will affect your ability to pay back the loan because you have to pay for all these um, extra event, extraordinary item. So then your company may not be able to pay back the loan. So then this um, ESG score, right, is particularly important in the bond markets because the, the risk factors, right, will increase their credit score, okay, will, will affect the, their credit score so that um, if, you, if you know which companies are, are very high risk, then maybe you need to avoid those bonds issued by those companies. Okay, so let's take a look at the template. Um, because it's very hard for me to get other templates, so I find that there's a Fitch 
um, reading template online. And then um, the topics here are those very similar to those 14, 14 topics that we saw from just now over here, the 14 topics here. Proceed for good. These 14 topics are almost the same under the, the Fitch scoring template. So, and then they have a very detailed um, talk about what kind of issues they are you're, you're facing. So I was thinking maybe I can let you guys um, go through this, have a look so that you know how they can um, do the scoring so that when you look at a company, ABC company, then straight away you can look at this company in terms of the ESG scoring, right? From the three perspectives. So environment, you have to look at into these issues. Social, you have to look at that issue. And then governance, you have to look at that issue. And then, then in your mind, you quickly come up with the um, assessment and then you come up with the scoring, okay? Okay, so um, for environment, right? You are looking for this emissions and air quality. So this one refer to the emission. So it's something like a waste emission. Okay, so what kind of industry, what kind of industry will involve in this risk? You type in the chat deck. What kind of industry will involve in this risk? This environmental risk as in the um, emission, the waste material, oil and gas, coal mining, and some manufacturing metal and also some manufacturing as well okay some of the manufacturing companies and um, energy so this energy usually refers to the renewable energy transportation yes okay transportation the shipping right yeah logistic shipping so the water use water waste management okay so this water waste management um, referring to um, their, their waste as well. Because sometimes um, you, you need to dispose of your waste. Water treatment plant, yes. Uh, the water treatment plant is to counter the problem. But the thing is that some companies, right, they want to dispose their waste. Maybe they will dispose of in the river or, you know, the sea or something. So those are causing pollution. So it's how they... Um, manage their, their waste. Okay, so is it have a proper water treatment plan? Overbuilding by developer, mm. glove factories, palm oil mills, uh, liners. Okay, so all these are actually um, a lot of waste. But for the glove factory, I don't think they have a lot of waste. Um, the palm oil, nowadays they are looking at um, using the waste product from the palm oil um, kernel or something. What is that? Okay. Anyway, it's a waste product from the palm oil, and then they put it and turn into a renewable um, source of energy. It's called is it called bio bio ah biomass? Yes, Yan Wun. Yes, biomass. Okay. So so therefore, you see some of the plantation companies, right? They were on that good for um uh the the it, the index. Okay which is uh, because they are doing this uh, renewable energy that is caring for the environment. So this will add them some marks. Although you, you originally you started with a very biodiesel. Ah, biodiesel, yeah, I think biodiesel. Mm, I forgot whether it's biomass or biodiesel. But it's one of those, okay? So the term is, is either one of those. So then you can actually um, have some scoring that score you some marks there, okay? and um, expo explosion, exposure to the environmental impact. Okay, then you have the social. Social will be the human rights, community relations, and then you have the customer welfare. Now you see uh, privacy and data security. Okay, which industry are more, um, you will lose mark on this, data security and privacy. Which industry will lose mark on this? You can give me some US companies as well, okay? Any companies, I just want to know if you know what are the risks involved. Ah, social media, very good. IT, Facebook, very, very good. All right, yes, you got it. Yes, so all these um, IT company, Google, Amazon, 
Okay, so all these, because they have all the all our information. And can you imagine if the information is being leaked out? Then um, they will definitely have uh, you they have the must have a compensation if let's say there's money involved that lose lose the money. Okay. So all right, that's good. That means you know. And what is nine? Nine is a phone, is it? It's a kind of app for the phone. Okay. It's a phone app. Okay. Labor relations and practices, and then employee well-being and exposure to social impact. So basically, you need to care for the workers, you need to care for the um the less advantaged um society. So I see that um Many public listed companies, they when they publish their sustainability um, report, or even they do not publish a sustainability report, but then they put it under the annual reports. Okay, there will be some CSR effort, okay, social um corporate social responsibility, some CSR effort. But now this CSR effort is not enough, so we are looking at the ESG now. Okay. Yeah. Mm, okay, I see the word Nestle there. Okay, later we'll come into Nestle. I will, I will, I will ask you what do you predict the score, the ESG score for Nestle? Okay, I will ask you. Okay. Then um, governance, governance will be the management um strategy. Okay, so it depends on the effectiveness of the management to communicate with the stakeholders. It is very important. You you. You do not want to see the management whereby they are um, not transparent. Okay, you want them to be transparent. And if there is a risk involved, the management has to tell the people about the potential risk. A lot of time, um, how honest is the management that they are giving people investors about their potential risk or potential issues or potential problems? So. Um, corruption free. Mm -hmm. So all this, you are looking at the uh, potential um, risk that you may bring to the investors. So um, before it happens, you have to let the investors know that um, your company may be running into this kind of a situation. So a lot of time, um, even especially during the COVID, you can see that a lot of the um, annual reports, they have to specify that in view of the recession, they will think that the company sales will reduce. Okay, so you have to be um, transparent. Very light, um, tight leeway for management. Okay, so actually, um, it is the management responsibility to let them know, okay, let the people know. And um, yeah. Okay, so non-executive political appointees. Okay, so all these um, shareholders, when you're in the management position, you need to um, be responsible for your um, company. Okay, financial transparency, all this um, group structure and all these things. And um, let's see. So let's see some of these things. Uh. So for example, we look into one industry, which is... Uh, Alcoholic beverage environment score. So in this beverage um, alcoholic environment score, right? So if before I, I show you all this thing, right? What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Like um, which part here, E or S or G, that you think that they will score um, high risk? They will have a high score of uh, risk. High, high score means high risk. Is it the E part or the S part or the um the G part? Yes, very good. It's the social because it's environment as uh, alcoholic. No, social is more okay. Social because um you are actually um causing some social um impact, right? Because you are actually this is a bad habit, so it will cause social problem. Okay. So in terms of environment, it depends on your operation part because sometimes it's just a, you know, maybe manufacturing of the bottling or manufacturing part whereby um, you may not do much waste or maybe it's a disposal of your waste or this thing will affect. And then um, 
may not pose much risk, but what is higher the risk will be the responsible alcohol consumption. Okay, so you need to label your product well and marketing in your marketing. You need to say that this is actually harmful or whatever. Um, and then, uh, yeah, um, regulatory impact from lack of response, um, responsible drinking. So you need to let the people know aware that um, responsible drinking is important. Okay, so, so you need to play a social responsible role in this. You know that your industry is producing alcohol, let's say. Then maybe you need to participate in more of these social kind of uh, um, activities in order to bring up your image. Just like those um, plantation companies, they want to have a renewable energy to improve their image. Okay, So you know which part you are not good at, so you need to improve your image in that sense. Then in terms of governance, I think it's pretty standard. So it's a management. They look at the decision and such that um, they have to uh, ensure food safety, um, product quality, and things like that. Okay, You see the quality and timing uh, of the financial disclosure as well, and also the product quality of their um, production as well. OK. OK, utility industry. So when you look at this utility industry, right, which one that comes to your mind that will give you some high risk? Ah, okay, it's quite simple, right? It's environment. Because this basically will cause a lot of emissions from the operation. So basically, in this utility industry, they will score quite high in this manner because high means high risk. Nah. They will score high. Okay, doesn't mean that you have to score high means good. That means you score high means high risk. Okay. So uh, impact of the waste from the operation and things like that. Then the social, in terms of the social, um, not much of a, uh, the only social maybe is the worker safety, right? The worker safety and accident um, prevention. So this, this part here maybe uh, will cause some risk because if you do not um, take care, of the SOP of the safety nurse, then if there's a one accident, just one accident alone, it will cause a lot of damage. And especially if that costs lives, then a uh, huge compensation will be, you know, will be under the, the whole thing. So you need to compensate a lot. So all these are the risks. Okay. And then you have the governance. The governance are mostly for the reporting, financial reporting, disclosure, and then um, the management and things like that. Okay. Okay. How about the banking industry? If you look into the banking industry, right, which, which, ah, okay, so fast. Okay. Patrick, yeah, very fast. Okay. Yes. Um, chin, chin, yes. Okay, it's the G, it's the governance. And a lot of time, um, but luckily our um, governance is very powerful from the central bank side, Bank Nagara is a the major um, governance body that govern all the um, banking industry so that um, every, every bank they will, because after all, we came from the financial crisis. So when you came from a financial crisis, right? Um, all the, um, procedures and all the resources and effort will be taken into for this industry and then they want to improve the standards. So um, after this financial crisis, right, all the banking industry become uh, in the sense that the governance is higher standard. Okay, It's not so easily, you, you will not see another financial crisis so easily because of the, the precaution that, that taken by our central bank. So um, okay, social work, okay, in terms of the as social work, right, in fact, they score pretty well because they do a lot of uh, social CSR for the banking industry. Okay, so they, they do well in that, uh, in the sense they care for the community. The only thing, um, the high risk one will be this um, governance because if you are not careful, um, you may, ah, social work, okay. Another thing, privacy and data security. How about it, right? 
because for the banking industry, right, they have all our data information. So if let's say whoever stolen or there's a um, data is stolen and then that will lead to fraud or whatever or um, scam or whatever. Okay, so all this will be under the social. And for the compliance will be under the governance. Okay, compliance. So there is a lot of compliance in, in one layer and one layer. So um, it's not easy now in order to have the staff um, stealing from the bank. Okay, last time maybe it's easier, but now it's not so easy anymore. Okay, so then you have, um, in terms of the environment, I don't think we have much to say, you see, NA, NA, NA. So probably you don't score high risk here. And then probably you score some risk over here because of the data thing. And then over here, um, some governance. If let's say your bank is a small bank, that lack of governance or whatever, and then you approve the loan, simply approve or whatever, then um, you will score high in the sense of the risk, okay? Okay, so um, now let's see uh, which industry is uh, ESG friendly. Okay, what do you think? You tell me the name. Besides banking, what else? Data security, okay, data security just now was the S thing. Okay, which industry is ESG friendly, meaning that they, um, they can score well and then they score in a low risk factor and then they can get into that index. Telco, yes. Green power, yes. Um, electric car, yes. Very good. Okay, I have all this here. Um, what else? Okay, technology, healthcare, solar consumer, trading and services, um, electric vehicle, okay, and solar energy as well. Okay, good. Um, okay, so far in Busan, in terms of education, uh, we don't have many education stocks. Okay. Okay, which industry is not ESG friendly? Which industry is not ESG friendly? Okay. Oil and gas, property, gambling, gaming. Okay, good. Tobacco. Okay, oil and gas, number one. Utility, chemical, construction, yes. Mining, steel, mining. Tobacco, yeah, these, right? Commodities, planta excuse me, plantation, but I do not have, I didn't write that plantation. Okay, very good. It seems that you guys are doing very well. Okay. Now, then we come to the quiz part here. Okay, I have 10 stock here for you to guess what is their score. Okay, let me show you the first one first so that you know what to expect. So basically, this is a sustainalytics.com, okay? And uh, this one is a, quite a, a reputable um, website whereby it has all over the world stocks in it and they rank them according to the um, ESG risk rating. So if you have uh, uh, zero to 10 points, it's negligible, that means low risk. And then 10 to 20 points is low risk. 20 to 30, is a medium risk, 30 to 40 is high risk, and then above 40 is severe risk. Okay, so you, you will have this kind of a rating. So in this case, you, it has a 1,000 over, this, this thing is um, the worldwide banks, you know, worldwide banks. So um, you are looking at this comparison worldwide. And um, so for Maybank, it's 27.2. It's consider the medium risk, okay? So actually you can um, see this. Okay, wait now, I show you that website first. So this one is actually this, this um, website, I, I give you this. Okay. I give you this link and then you can click in it. What about, um, I can't see this. Mm. Uh, Hong Kong Bank, public, all the banks are about the same as public bank, uh, as the main bank. The banking industry are more or less the same. Okay. You can, you can type here, okay? 
public bank. P-U-B-L-I-C. Public. Sometimes uh, it didn't show, then maybe it doesn't have. Okay, so public bank doesn't have. Bad broken. Okay, never mind. So you try yourself. Okay, you see. Okay, then are you ready for the quiz? So it's a score between zero to um, I think forty and above lah. Okay, zero to forty and above. So P P Bank. Oh, okay. So you you. You manage to search, is it P P P? My line is broken. Maybe I need to refresh. P P. Ah, got it. Yeah. <gasps> what is this? No, this one. No. Not this one is not the bank. This is a uh, um another company. P okay, sorry. P B B. No, I don't see it. It's not there. Okay. No, it doesn't have that public bank. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, never mind. Okay, let's guess uh, Nestle. What do you think will be the score for Nestle? You you just type a number, zero to forty and above, uh, maybe zero to fifty lah. You just type a number. See see whether you can you know guess the 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 company itself. See whether you can guess or not. Ah, good. Okay. Okay, let's review. Okay, let's review. So I can see that some of you think that is um quite low, right? But then some of you think that is high. But uh, what's the reason for higher? Uh, it's not that high actually. It's nineteen point seven. It's below twenty. So the nearest is the Boon Ping, Boon Ping twenty. Is it nineteen point seven? You are very close. Um, another one, Zheng Yu Tan, also twenty. Hey, this one cheat one. Karel, you you Google already. Okay, Adrian twenty. Okay, okay, cannot cannot play cheat now. Nah. You 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 have to guess what. You have to guess. Okay, Petronas guess. Petronas guess. What is the 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 score? Okay, not not sixty three lah. Sixty three is too high lah. Thirty five. Okay, around thirty right. Okay. So let's see. Uh, 29.4, which is around 30. Okay, not, not as high as 40, la, about 30. So yen, um, chai yen tan, you are, you are close. Okay, 30. Now it's 29.4. Okay, then the next one, top love. Uh, interesting. Recently, last year they had this um, labor issue, right? But is it that bad? What do you think? Okay. Some say 20. Okay. Some say it's um, 30, 25, 25. Okay. Let's review. 26. Okay. So the 25, Mary, you are close. Lily, you are close. Um, Sing Ho, you are close. Okay. Mm. <laughs> no, tomorrow can buy numbers. Uh, no, lah. This, this three numbers, how to buy also cannot buy. Okay. So 26.1 is not that bad. It's medium risk, you know, lower than the public bank, um, lower than the main bank. So you'll be, you'll be surprised. Okay. Then, Hatalega. The reason why I want to compare is because Hatalega doesn't have any bad news on the human labor thing. Top Love had, had some news, okay? So by right, it should be higher or lower. Okay, it should be lower, right? Yeah. So I see that you guys, um, some of you say below 20, yeah? 
uh, around 1920, I see most of the answer. Okay, 17.4, you, you are close. Okay, so those um, that have the 18 one, you are very close. Uh, 18 will be Joe, Evelyn, and um, yeah, you guys, very good. Okay. Okay, now this one. Uh, Gunting plantation. Plantation, uh, I do not know whether they have any renewable. You need to see, read through their an, an, um, analyst report or their annual report, see whether they have renewable energy or not. Oh, wow. Albert, you say nine. Uh, why nine? Mm, but isn't this a plantation? Okay, cannot be less than the cannot be less than the next layer, right? Okay, Joe say 40. Okay, I review the answer. You probably got a shock. 47.8. Okay, I don't know which area because for this report, right? You need to be a member, then you can click. Right. There's a section whereby you can see where's the risk. But because I'm not the member, you have to pay 50,000 per year for this membership. It's too expensive. So this over here, right, they will show you um, what are the top ESG issue, you see? Then you can view. Of course, you have to pay la, for the subscription. Then you can see the top ESG issue for that particular company. So, so I, I do not have. So this one is another plantation company. Okay. Okay, so just now I saw 40. Somebody say 40. Mm. Okay, so the uh, Joe, Joe, you are very close, right? Joanne, Joanne, you are very close. Okay, how about Sime Gabi plantation? See, I want to show you like um, two plantations, just like two glove stock, and then um, not necessarily all are bad because some can be better. Okay. Uh, this one should be better than that Gunting Foundation, right? Because I, I believe they have some renewable um, effort also. Okay, so I can see that you have uh, 30, 26. And um, okay, let's see. 34. Okay, anybody say 35? 32. Ah, Chin Chin, you are close. 32. And um, 35, ah, Yen, Chai Yen, you are close, 35. Tony also close. And then um, Yao Sim Khan also close. Muhammad Adi also close. Adrian also close. Eng Sing Ho also close. Ah, very good. Okay. Muhammad Adi, yeah, Muhammad Adi also very close. Mm, Sing Ho also very close, very good. Okay, so that means you can kind of like estimate the score. Okay, how about BAT? Now this one, uh, I don't know whether it's straightforward or not straightforward, but okay. So some say 50, 35, 40, um, 60 is too high, 35, 40, okay, let's see, yeah. 15, oh, uh, some say 15. Uh, Okay, mm, 29, some say 29, Lily say 20. Okay, and uh, actually it's not that, it's medium risk, you know, it's not that, maybe they do a lot of uh, good work. Uh, I mean, uh, social corporate responsibility. So 27.8 is actually medium. So I see that um, Muhammad Adi, you are close. And then um, Hoi, Chuan Hoi, you are close. And then, um, who else? Those around the 30 region will be closed. Mm. And then Yen, um, Chuan Hoi, okay. Quite good, uh, some of you are quite good. You, you are able to uh, estimate quite um, accurate for quite a number of stocks. Mm. Smoke, <laughs> okay. Okay, how about Astro? Astro. Media, Astro, what do you think? What, what could be the um, score? Uh, I see that score started to come down. Okay, 20, 
13, 15. So that means you, you can actually estimate uh, looking at the, the stock itself. 18, 20, okay, very good, 19. Okay, let's see, yeah. 16 is the lowest among these stocks, okay? So I can see that just now somebody said 15. Uh, okay, Chi Hong Tan, you are close. Um, Xiao Ki Wo, you are close. Muhammad Eddy, you are um, not that close now. Um, Dominic, you are close. Um, Li Seng Guan, you are close. And Kenny Tan, you are uh, not that close. Um, Wun Peng, you are close. Dominic, okay, very good, okay. So you guys are actually getting the, the hang of it. You can check public bank by key in 1295. Oh, 1295. Okay, let's see public bank. Huh? Okay, 1295. Ah, you are right. Oh, can key in the stock code. Okay, smart. So the risk is higher than the main bank. So that means Hong Leong Bank also can key in the stock code. Okay. So um, public bank is higher than main bank. Okay. But I don't know what is uh, Hong Leong Bank stock code. So if you key in, you can also see. It's interesting to see among the banks, right? Which banks are of a higher um, ESG risk? 5819. Okay. 5819. Ah, got it. Oh, this is lower, lower than the May Bank. Okay. Yeah, lower than the May Bank. That's good. Wow, well done. Okay, let's go back. Gamuda, construction. What do you think? Gamuda 25, 35, 40, 30. 30, 30, mm, I see a lot of 30. Okay, let's see. Who say 40? You are very close. Just now, somebody say 40. Um, where are you? Ah, Lily, you are very close. Then who else? Okay, we only have one 40, which is Lily. Okay, well done. Okay, somebody say something. Maybe you can group all the companies in the same industry and see average. Mm, that will take a lot of time. If you have the time, you can do it. Okay, some uh, Chin Chin is saying that we can group all the companies in the same industry and then we can see their score. Of course, if you have the time, you just have to do it. Okay, good. Okay, well done. So we have all the 10 quizzes. Now we'll continue the last part, okay? So using the ESG rating in the practice. So in the practice, right, um, what are the usage of this ESG? So the ratings can be used as the building blocks for integrating ESG into investments in variety of ways, including active portfolio management, benchmark construction, and company engagement. So not necessarily is a portfolio management. You can even have it like company engagement. Like if you want to do business with a certain company, maybe it can be a company engagement. Not necessarily has to be uh, investor relation. And then um, portfolio evaluation and manager due diligence. So basically in practice, you can um, use this as a portfolio evaluation and manager due diligence. So in fact, um, it is part of the portfolio evaluation. Okay, um, many, many funds now um, they are practicing um, ESG. And some funds, they even take out the, that industry that are of high risk because um, rather than you know, putting it you, into your portfolio, right, the risk itself um, is too high. So that means they want to take it out. So certain industries. And um, the engagement and the stewardship. Okay, so, and also because of the governance. Okay, so in, in the sense that you want to see that which company um, is uh, good management. So usually those low, low score ones are the good management company as well. Okay, like we saw just now, Hong Leong Bank, right? Mm. Okay. 
Then the risk management, the ESG rating enable investors to identify companies with the greatest ESG exposure and can you can be used alongside conventional risk manager to provide a complementary perspective. So it's a form of a risk management. So you can see that those with the 40 and above, right? Probably you want to avoid those um, stock in your um, portfolio. Okay. Then research and analyst. Okay, this the risk and return relationship of different ESG aspect will vary. So the ESG ratings provide a granular and comprehensive data set for a research and analyst. So in fact, um, for all the research team, right, they will have to have this ESG rating in their in their normal um, research work. And um, some research team they have their own. ESG rating scorecard. That means they come up with their own scorecard and then they evaluate. So those are very tedious. And then, but certain, um, most of the funds, right, they will subscribe to the, um, to those um, institutions, like the one that I show you, that you have to pay 50,000 USD per year, okay, to subscribe the service. Okay, we have come to the end. I'm sure um, I see that most of you have um, basically grasped the, the knowledge and the essence of um, estimating the ESG score. Because a lot of time, the first time when I um, got this um, topic, ESG, wow, this is a very tough topic. And um, I read through a lot of uh, YouTube and articles and a lot of time, this find this topic very, very boring and dry. So I was wondering how to make this session you know, more interesting. So then I, I think in this approach, um, participants will learn, learn more, okay? So by um, giving you um, the perspective from the, um, the score, scorecard template, you have to look into the scorecard and see how they actually um, do the criteria filter um, scoring part. And then also um, the, some of the, 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 the scoring, okay? The actual scoring for our Busan Malaysia stock. Okay, so um, I conclude here and I pass back to Shane. Thank you so much, Pauline, for mm. putting in your best effort to make <laughs> this as interesting and engaging as you possibly can uh, in this uh, session. So thank you so much, Pauline. So if you have any question for Pauline, you may ask her in the Q&A box, not the chat box, uh, ask her in the Q&A box. 